Hey everybody, hope all is well. I'm well despite the allergies. So, Lord, we gotta keep spreading the word. Some ladies aren't getting the memo. Look on the screen, look on the screen, pretty girl, mother of two, missing. Missing for a month. So one black woman is missing. And one is gone. You already know how I think. Yeah, I suspect Latiti. I suspect terrible Tyrone. Let's go ahead and look at these stories. Let's go ahead and do this one first. There are two. So this lady here been, has been missing for a month. The family feels the worst. Of course, understandable. And this woman here is gone. These are her three children. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get to it and we'll provide uh, commentary. Let's check it out. Fair use. Tour. I imagine always family. Really, in my heart of heart, I really believe somebody's done something to her. I met Joey's family fearing the worst now that a mother of two has been missing for a month. Family and friends haven't seen Beverly Logan since late last month. News source Jenna Ray digs into their desperate search for answers. My niece Wendy was the initial one that said, have you heard from Beverly? Have you heard from Beverly? Ain't you? Have you heard from Beverly? Nobody has heard from Beverly. This is 31-year-old mother of two, Beverly Logan. Her family says her disappearance doesn't make any sense and concern is growing by the minute. This is just so unlike her. Bev would never go this long without texting her mom. She would never go this long without checking on her kids. Never. This is so just out of pocket. January 25th was the last time family heard from Beverly. St. Clair County Sheriff's Office filed a missing persons report for her on February 13th. We don't know if there's anything any foul play or if there's a reason that she's missing we don't know that so any information is what we're looking for to uh try to resolve this police and family tell me they believe beverly was last seen near this intersection of burma road and ross lane it's just off of the busy 159 that goes through most of the metro east captain fleshring with the sheriff's office tells me they've been trying to track beverly down but have no leads. Deputies and family believe she may have also been spotted near Sullivan, Missouri. Somebody knows something. Somebody, and just, just, just leave a, just drop a dime. Just tell us, you know, good or bad. You know, we're prepared for it all. Here's Beverly's picture again. If you've seen her in the last few weeks, call 911 or the St. Clair County Investigative Unit. That number there on your screen. I'm going to read it to you. It's 618. 825-5204. You can also find that number. Wow. Pretty girl missing a mother of two. So who has the children? More than likely, the honor family members will have to raise them. And, you know, you, you want to hope for the best. You really do. You want to hope for the best. But you already know. Uh, when women are missing... Husband, boyfriend, baby daddy are just some strange, random, deadly, dusty. So if anyone is seen in the area, ladies, keep your head on a swivel. But stop and think about it. Obviously, something, something bad has happened. You just have to face it. Something is bad has happened. If they've checked the police, they've checked the hospital records. It's not looking it, to me. Just I mean, a whole month. The mother of two. I'm afraid. You you can't help but think the worst because we know that black women are killed every five point five hours. Dusty's been drama. They've been death and trauma. The financial implications. It is simply too much dust in the nation. Hoping, praying for a safe return, but you just have to be uh, realistic. As a family said, they fear something bad, of course. They know their loved one. Mother of two, missing for a month. Mm. 
Now let's go ahead and look at this story here. I'm afraid she's met her demise with a dust bucket. Now this lady here, she has three children. Um, I'll go ahead and get to the story and let you all decide. So I'm assuming that one of these, they said she has a one-year-old. Okay, so I'm assuming the baby daddy might be Dusty Dan. Uh, may have been the one that got her. Either way, we know it is an evil, diabolical, deadly, homicidal maniac, Dusty. So let's check out this story. And I want you to see his background. Okay. It could be Lil TT or Dusty Dan, one of them. I want you to see his background. And then I'm just saying, look at his background. Then look at the fact that she has a one year old child by him. And then look at what has allegedly happened to her. Dealing with a low performing man, you're dealing with a man that's, you're dealing with trash. Fair use, in my opinion. We have plenty of wow. family that are Crazy. going to rally around them and make sure that they know how much their mom loved them and they know what a good person she was. Tonight, a mother's death leaves so many unanswered questions and the man she had a child with jailed. St. Louis police started this whole case as a burglary investigation. Well, tonight it's so much deeper. And that man's yeah. accused of putting her in a deadly headlock. The story originates on the city's south side on Dunica Avenue near Chippewa and Grand. That's where News Force Russell Kinsall is tonight, learning about that mother and the suspect. Russell? Well, the 46-year-old man who is a suspect lives in the apartment right back behind me. That's where there are two balloons and a sign, those left by some friends of the woman who died here yesterday evening. Because the man who is the suspect has not been charged, we're not releasing his name. But we have learned that he has, this is the first time that he's been arrested by police and locked up in jail. And we lost a great person. Like, she could walk in a room, and no matter what, she'd make you laugh. There are balloons and a sign reading, Rest in Peace, at the apartment where the victim lost her life. When I got the knock on my door, I just, I still almost can't believe it. Like, it hasn't hit me yet, you know? A friend who asked us not to identify her told us the victim was 34-year-old Anitra Whitehead. She said Whitehead and the suspect had a one-year-old child together. This is just blowing my mind. It's just out of character for both of them. Frank Robertson is a neighbor who said the suspect was friendly and Whitehead was seen at his apartment often. I mean, yeah, they argue, they, you know, yell at each other, say a couple of words, but they usually just, they usually just part and everything. Mm. But this is out of character and I've never known him to just hurt anybody. We checked the suspect's background and found he pleaded guilty in 2007 to second degree murder and felonious restraint and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. According to police, Whitehead broke into the suspect's apartment, but her friend doubts that. As far as her breaking in, she lived there. I mean, more than half of her stuff was there. Like I said, they've been co-parenting. I wasn't here, but I don't see why she would even have to break in. For one, he would always open the door. There, you know, there wouldn't have to be a break-in situation. And she had keys, so I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Police have asked prosecutors to charge the suspect with involuntary manslaughter and the death of Anitra Whitehead, a mother who leaves behind three children. For now, prosecutors are reviewing the case. No timetable on when or if charges. Okay, so let's understand this. He tried to give a story that she broke in, but, and put her in a chokehold which resulted in her loss of life. You have a child by a woman and you can recognize her from a burglar. She's, she's a burglar. She broke into your home. And you put her in a chokehold and she's dead. You didn't know it was your baby mama? She has her things there. She lives there. And she probably came to get some of her things. You, I keep telling these ladies, these dust bucket needs you besides your purse and Miss Perline. They can't even set up shop without you. The other thing I wanted to um, discuss was, have you noticed? And it might be a uh, dusty Dan. Either way, I can say it's just an evil dust bucket. Look at his uh, background. 
he already saw uh serve what 15 years second degree murder 15 years in prison second degree murder felonious restraint everybody need a second chance yep he got a second chance and where's this woman Fifteen years facing major charges. Second degree murder. And now we have this situation. She has a relationship with him. She tried to break into the house. Put him in a chokehold. Now she's dead. What a dude been charged with he's been up before. Second degree murder. And now he's murdered, allegedly put her in a chokehold. She's dead. Hmm. I don't know. I guess in my simple mind, I'm kind of seeing this guy as a, a second degree uh, uh, murderer, a, uh, a second murderer. He's got a second murder on his belt based on his report. Because he said she broke in, he put her into a chokehold, and now she's dead. And she's the mother of his one-year-old child. Why would you put into a chokehold? We don't want to face reality sometimes that the Dusties have a high propensity to hurt and to call, cause violence. She had a key. She's known there frequently. And he's trying to pull a burglary angle. The mother of his one-year-old child. How about we face it for what it is? You've picked up some evil, dusty, deadly trash, in my opinion. He's already gone up 15 years for what was it, attempted murder, the charges. He's already gone up before. And so she then gets with, oh yeah, he no, he went up to second degree murder, not attempted, second degree murder. So he's already been up for second degree murder. She gets involved with him, and now appears she's been murdered. A chokehold, she was like no natural death. This guy may just have the propensity like to murder people. She broke in. Well, you know, you're a felon. It's a female. She didn't have a weapon. All you had to do was leave a call the police. Uh-uh, that anger. That anger. And she's the mother of three. Now, who's going to raise these three children? Imagine you have your life set up. What if you're married with a family, money stretched thin, or you may be the single one. And I notice a lot of times me and mom try to come with, they try to find a single woman um, that's working on her own, try to come with, somebody got to do something. Laquanda. I said it before in another video, and I know some people probably think, oh, that's too far-fetched. I said it before, and I will say it again. If you have in your family, or you're assisting people, every now and then, these women, they get tangled up with these dust buckets, and they need help financially. If you find yourself in a position where they're looking to you to contribute on a regular basis for their survival of themselves or their children, oh, diapers, oh, money, oh, food, oh, formula, oh, my car's down. If they're coming to the family members consistently and they are single mothers, it's time to have a conversation for her. And especially if they're dealing with a Dusty. Time for the sit down. What we're going to need you to do is sign these life insurance papers, uh, the application, and go ahead and get this physical loan. Because what we're not going to do, we're not going to sit up here and deal with the aftermath, aftermath of the seed of poverty D. 
Dealing with poverty D, it puts you in deeper poverty that you can't get out of. Dealing with poverty D can also bring you death. So what we need to do, if you find yourself in any situation where you're dealing with a woman who is dealing with poverty D, just speaking in general, and she is consistently seeking financial assistance from other family members, what we need to do is have you to sit down this weekend. How you doing? Yeah, we can have brunch, Sunday dinner too. Guess what? We got some paperwork for you, girl. What? An application for some life insurance? Because you are knowingly, and again, not just this lady here, it's too late. But I'm saying we have life is business. I, I'm uh, you're not going to sit up here and just be a, a, a pocket watching me and picking my pocket, and then oh, something done happened. We got to do something, y'all. Uh uh. We need to have a conversation, and we're going to go ahead and do a life insurance policy. I don't want to do that. Well, I hate to tell you, and, and that, that's the whole idea. This might kind of scare him up a bit. Let him know. This is what typically happens when you deal with men like the men you've chosen. Dust buckets. Diabolical homicidal dust buckets. This is what happens. And you have children. This may wake him up. Let's go ahead and have a, uh, yes, yeah, so since we're here, girl, let's go ahead and have a little conversation. This is something that everybody needs to do if you're dealing with women that are dealing with dust buckets and that are facing, you know, that may be financially challenged as a result of the men that they have in their lives. Yeah, we need to go ahead and get this application going and see about this physical. What is it? It's a life insurance policy. So in case something happens to you, your children can be provided for. Girl, I don't want to sign that. Well, I got news for you. I don't want you knocking on my door, seeing what I can do financially for you and your children. This might be the wake-up call. Here you go. Yeah, the application, we can do it online. Application for life insurance. So if and when, we're hoping now, but if it does, no one's going to sit up here and go through their life savings to take care of your kids. I have seen a, a woman talk about her story, retired, fell into the same kind of trap, and end up bankrupt, losing her home, sitting up there with the darn lights out, and retired. Her daughter's choices. Do the sitting ran off. You you plan your money for one. Now you got a plan for three. You and two kids. Money is so it's like, are you kidding me? You gotta you only plan for you. You're like, yeah, this is enough for me. You know, I've raised mine on my own. I'm gonna retire now. That ran through the retirement money, raising two kids and wanting having medical issues. Got to get them to school, feed them clothing, utilities, all, all of that. Found herself going back to work. Uh, really wasn't financially feasible because two kids at that young age. The daycare, taking up most of the check. Sitting up in your place. Looking, facing lights being turned off. It's a new day. Life is business. We're going to act accordingly. We're not going to let other people's decisions that they've made. And because we have love in our hearts for the children, we're not going to have them sitting up here putting us into no poverty. So no, honey. And if you can't tell them, I can help you out. I sure as hell will. Uh, turn this video on. And let's say, hey, let's do this. If you can't say those words, leave it to me. I sure can. Hey, Nick, Nick, girl. Have a seat. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna uh we're not gonna be dancing around this issue. That's this is what I would do. You're not gonna sit up here, oh I got to go ahead and oh you but money goes by so fast. And it's getting hard to survive. So yeah, it's something to think about. If you're dealing within your families, and I say it out of love because I can, I've seen this happen. Other people can turn your life upside down. You're trying to pick up the aftermath and pick up the pieces. And people say, We're gonna all pitch in, that's some BS. When they see you have a bunch of children to support, and they know, uh-oh, so and calling, I'm going to go ahead and you're going to start getting voicemail. So don't go for the, we going to all pitch in. So yeah, just right here, we need to start thinking differently, ladies. We are on self-preservation. So rest in peace to her, and then the children, three children, a one-year-old in the picture. 
So thanks for watching. Feel free to come like, subscribe, and share the video. I would appreciate it. And please hit, if you don't mind, the notification button. But yeah, think about that. Uh, if you, that's what we're facing because we have a lot of in the in the black community. It's time to have a little sit down. Hey, girl. This might be the wake-up call. It might get some to think. And if they come up with, girl, I don't want to do all that. And you can make it plan. Like I said, you don't have to tell them how to show them the video. So, Miss Lady, we love and respect you. But let me tell you something. We're not going to face financial ruin in the event that you have a dust bucket in your life. So, that, that right there, you're choosing your demise. So guess what we're not going to do is sit up here if something happens to you and bleed ourselves dry, uh, dry thanks to you choosing the seed of poverty, D. So if you're going to need help from other people, we're going to need to go ahead and uh, we need to go ahead and get this paperwork set up. We need to go ahead and get a life insurance policy set up for you today. In the event, so if you care about your children, then this you know get the darn policy. If she can't afford it, the one who's going to own the policy and make sure that you are the owner of the policy, not her, because she might give it to her man. Make sure you're the owner because the owner has control and can be the can change the beneficiary. Don't be one stupid where they try to make their old baby daddy the beneficiary because he might be the one that's going to take them out. But yeah, if she doesn't want to do that, let them know. Well, so you don't want to get a life insurance policy on you. Well, what makes sure that if something happens to you, somebody want to sit up here. We love the kids, but that's not our financial responsibility. You up here, uh, uh, you and your man might be the one to end somebody's possibility of creating generational wealth. So if she don't want to sign, you can keep that in mind. You need to go ahead and get your affairs in order. We all do. I don't, girl, I'm not trying to hear about that right now. We'll let her know real nicely. And we're not trying to hear about something that's happened to you. And we're going to take care of my kids. Kids don't live off love. Take that love to the grocery store and uh, 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 get some food. Take the love to the grocery store and pay a copay at the doctor's office. Take that love to the grocery store and go pay your rent your mortgage with it. A lot of people got love, and guess what? And them and that love is getting evicted. So just something to think about, and I'm out.